What's going on everybody and welcome to part three of our data visualization application development tutorial with Python and Dash. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is building on the last tutorial where we basically made an interactive UI that accepted some text input, output that exact text input, and then later we accepted some input and tried to output that input to the power of two. Um, but you can get much more um, you can get much more advanced than just that, uh, and that's kind of what I want to exemplify here. So uh, to begin, uh, I'm going to be using Pandas and Pandas Data Reader. If you don't have them, you can do a pip install upgrade Pandas and Pandas Data Reader. In the future, uh, the methodology that I use here could very well change. Uh, if it does, check out the text-based version of this tutorial and or make complaints in the uh, comment section if there's no updates in the uh, text-based version. And I uh, will do my best to uh, find a, an upgradable source. Maybe I'll use something like Quandle or something like that. But basically, the objective here for me is to show you that you can create like an input field and then graph based on whatever you type in that input field. So you can graph any sort of symbol like Quandle has all kinds of things that you could you could chart from housing markets to finance to uh, agriculture stuff to everything. Like they've got just so many data sets. So anyways, uh, this is just an example. Like I said before, I, I feel like every time I do something finance related, people tell me they don't know and understand finance and they hate it. Um, that's totally fine. Just ignore the fact this is finance. Uh, it's just data organized by date. Okay, that's it. So, um, so with that, let's get into it. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use the pandas data reader uh, to pull in some stock information um, based on whatever ticker we want to pass. So, uh, I think what I'm going to do here is um, kind of my objective here is to show you kind of. Um, in a much more higher level kind of way how you could piece together an app like this and how truly simple it is and I feel like if I type everything line by line it's kind of pointless so um, I'm just going to kind of show you and if you want you can go to the text-based version of this tutorial and copy and paste along with me uh, or you can <laughs> write it out if you want um, but anyways uh, this is how to use the the actual data reader um, you just all you're really doing is you're specifying starting time and ending time and then you're gonna read that stuff into a data frame if you don't know what data frames are uh, and you want to learn basically the real the the lowdown and skinny of what a data frame is is it's basically like Excel for Python it's just columns and rows um, but you can do like a lot of operations stuff like that so it's kind of like Excel for Python uh, but if you want to learn more, you can go to pythonprogram.net, go to data analysis, and I have a whole series on doing data analysis with pandas. Anyway, uh, with that, uh, let's go ahead and run this real quick, just so you can kind of see what's going on here. So you'll get this warning, or at least you might, and then eventually <laughs> it just might not work. And that's why I made that caveat in, in the beginning. Um, but at the end of the day, hopefully you'll get some data that's like this. It's indexed by date. You've got open, high, low, close, volume. And again, if you don't know what that means, just some values. So <laughs> kind of close out of this. And um, so, so that's how we can grab that dot data uh, but it, let's say we want to actually graph that data in um, in dash well how much how might we actually go about doing that so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this here and I'm just gonna move this over I'm gonna come into here now and I'm gonna just copy and paste over some code that we used in the beginning so this is the code from part one of our uh, tutorial so if you recall it just gave a simple graph hopefully if I save this uh, I won't have server issue. Let's see what happens. Dang it! <laughs> oh, it didn't restart. Damn. Okay, hold on. Everybody, just wait. Hold on. Let's see if I can get it. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to open up the old, the old task manager. Uh, okay, let me pause. Okay, I really thought I had outsmarted it, but I, I guess I didn't. So, so let's try again. Uh, okay. Restart that server and come back over here. Let's refresh. Okay, now we have our basic app, and hopefully, all the changes I make from here. The I, what I tried to do is, is save this under a different name, uh, thinking that would circumvent all these problems, but it didn't. So bummer. Anyway, um, so now what we want to do is that rather than making this graph, let's graph the the pandas graph 
instead. So, so basically what we're going to do is we need to bring in those imports from pandas for so the data reader and the date time. So, so if I just come over here, like this is the script that we were using. I basically like I'm going to need all this information here. So if I came down here, pasted that in, um, let's make the end time. I think you can do date time dot date time dot now. So let's just do whatever the time is right now for you, you lovely folks. Um, then we can bring in the, the actual stock info. So I'm just going to say, uh, let's just say stock equals, uh, TSLA for Tesla. And, um, and then what we'll say is we'll bring over, here we go, DF. And then rather than Tesla there, we'll just throw it in there. Okay, <clears throat> now inside of this graph layout, uh, the ID, we can still keep that example graph. Uh, uh, the title should now be, let's just make the title stock. And then let's get rid of one of these X and Ys. We're gonna leave the line version. Uh, and then rather than being the SF example, we can bring in uh, Tesla uh, or rather stock. And then uh, let's bring in uh, rather, so the X and the Y, this should be df.index. And then this will be df, and we'll just do dot close. So df dot uh, capital C close. Once we've done that, still line, still stock, I think. We don't need hello dash, we don't need this either. We really could just do Oh my God, finance. <laughs> okay, uh, hopefully that updates. Let's see, it says it's restarted. Let's see if the dash gods approve. And they do, whoa. Okay, so it was that simple to bring in um, the graph into dash. Now, how much more challenging might it be for us to, uh, to instead bring in have this live, like let the user type in the actual ticker rather than hard coding it in the script. So now what we're going to do is bebop on back over to our script Reno here. And what are the things that we have to change? Well, the graph itself um, probably should maintain, um, well, we don't have to have a default. I mean, so, so basically what we'd want to do is have, like, so as you'll see here, what is the app.layout? Well, all the app.layout really is, it's a div tag that contains a graph. So rather than interactively returning some text, what if we interactively just return the graph element from that dash core uh, components, right? Can we actually do that? Um, spoiler alert, <laughs> you've actually already seen it. So you already know what the answer is. And uh, yes, we can. So now what we're going to do instead is um, we'll just get rid of this here. And I think what we'll do is rather than this, let's just call this uh, symbol to graph. And then rather than necessarily this being a graph, let me make sure it should be this. I'm just going to confirm that. Yes. So we'll start with that, that div element there of what symbol do we want to graph. Now what we want is an input field like we had before. Uh, that'll be an ID. We're going to call this input value. Let's leave value blank. That way it just seems, seems kind of silly to have that pre-populated. Then every time you delete, it's going to like rerun. We just don't want to do that. <laughs> so we'll leave value empty. And then we're going to say type equals text. Okay, so now let me make some space. I always like it when it's up here. So, okay. So type equals text. Um, okay. So that's our input. Now what we're going to want to have is somewhere to stuff the output. So we're going to do that in an HTML dot div. So a div tag ID will be output dash graph. Cool. So now what we have to do is like we had before, we need that callback. So we're going to make app dot callback. And again, it'll just be a nice little wrapper that contains output from this time the, uh, oh, we didn't import them. Uh, it was dash dot dependencies. 
So from dash dot dependencies, we're going to import input, comma output. Please no typos. That will cause too much of a headache. Dependencies. It looks like I spelled it right. Uh, okay, back to work. Output. Okay, so inside of output, we're going to say the component underscore ID is uh, we want to output to the output graph. Uh, the component property uh, will be the contents, basically. So we're just going to call that children. So that's the output. Now, again, the input. Maybe someone can answer this. I actually don't know for sure. Why does input need to be a list? Does it even need to be a list? Don't really want to test it live uh, due to the annoying uh, server issues if you hit a bug, so I'd rather not. Uh, but I'm curious, actually, to be honest. Component uh, ID equals input, and then the um, component property that is of interest to us is whatever the value of that form is. So, uh, okay. And for stylistic sake, we'll add that on a new line. Okay, now we want to actually make that graph. So define update, uh, we'll call this update graph. We'll call it input data. And now, let's see if we're, okay, so now what we can do, do we have date time and all that? We did bring that in, cool. So now what we want to do is we're just going to, do we delete? I did, I guess we deleted that graph. I'm gonna copy and paste that graph over just to save time. There's no reason for us to be doing that. We shouldn't have, I, I should have left it open in like another window or something. So you guys would have too. Anyways, show's gonna continue on. Uh, start and end. And again, that should be end.now. And that was trying to sneak its way in. And rather than Tesla, it should be input data. Um, and just for clarity, this is the ticker we want to pull. This is the source from which we want to pull it and then start time end time. Okay, so that's going to dynamically pull the data frame. Now all we need to do is graph it. And because I've already shown you this, the code to graph it, um, just for the sake of doing it, the, the code to graph it was with DCC. So it was this DCC.graph and then all this stuff, you've seen it before. Um, rather than graphing it, all we really need to do is return it. Because it's going to be a part of that, it's just going to be a child of that div um, right here. Okay, I believe we're ready. Let's check it out. Let's see if when I save this, if we error out. <gasps> Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I hit an error. Okay, so let's run it one more time. Let's see, invalid syntax. What did we close it? Oh, we closed it off. Why didn't somebody tell me now we're screwed? Damn it. I don't want to do this again. Okay, I'm going to have to probably restart the server, but it's going to be okay, everybody. It's going to be okay. Let's see. Let me just see. Let me just see. We can hope and pray. Oh, uh oh, uh oh. Are the gods favoring us today? <gasps> they might be. Nice. Okay. The app actually works. And we didn't have to restart the server. Thank the Lord. Okay. Okay. So that's a slightly more complex example. So going from just re outputting the same text that we've input to running a really simple function on that input to now. Um, you know, generating an entire graph based on that input. And even then, really most of the code is the stupid graph code. Um, but yeah, so, so pretty cool um, how simple this really, all this stuff really is. I mean, to do this in like Flask Plus, even if you were using Plotly or Bokeh or whatever you might be using, um, gosh, it would be a pain. <laughs> it would just really be a pain. And to make it update live like that, uh, you'd have to know so many things like different little things and it would take a while whereas this is just so simple like you just ah uh, i really like dash i'm really impressed I, the server thing is annoying but 
the ease with which you can make these apps is just crazy. And it's almost like, like honestly, it's tempting to use Dash to do a lot of stuff that isn't even graph related. Uh, I just haven't seen a framework. Like I wish, I wish you could do this sort of thing. And maybe you can with like, Jan like I would expect Django to be able to do like live updating stuff with like React and stuff um, this simply. But uh, to my knowledge, uh, it doesn't at least come out of the box doing that, but someone correct me or someone tell me if there exists a web framework for Python that is this absolutely lovely to use because <laughs> I really like this. Um, and maybe that's just because I've tried to create so many, so many of these like UIs that happen to use graphs for like data analysis and stuff. Anyways, won't waste any more of your time. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, and so now what we're going to do is move on. So at this point, it's uh, what we've covered is, you know, how to make, you know, basically how to have a user's interactivity update a graph. Uh, one of the other really common things to do is to just have a graph automatically update itself. So as, in the next tutorial, what I'm going to do is show how we can create live updating graphs um, that just update based on like an interval, kind of like the, the matplotlib graphs and stuff, and pretty much everything is going to update based on an interval. Usually it's a little more challenging to update based on an, like a like a database update or something like that, but as you could imagine, it actually wouldn't be the end of the world to do that uh, via Dash. But anyways, we're just going to update via interval, so that's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. If you have questions, comments, concerns, suggestions, whatever, Feel free to leave them below. Also, feel free to join our Discord link in the description. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.